Hello, everybody. So today is a great day to be a customer because of all the choices that you have available to you. Whether it be in-store, on digital, we as consumers can go into any storefront, go on our mobile phone, go on a computer, and find numerous products that we would want to buy. As a marketer, it's a little bit more challenging because of this fact. There are more and more people that are getting on the digital space, meaning for your brand, how do you stay on top of the competition and how do you differentiate yourself? So today, today, we're going to talk about personalized marketing and how having a hyper-focused, tactical, um, personalized marketing effort can really make your business stand out. So who in this room would consider themselves a millennial? <laughs> We are always trying to define what exactly a millennial is, and I think millennials actually get kind of a bad rap. We're always about ourselves. It's a me, me, me generation. And if you take a look at the Time Magazine cover that came out earlier this year, you'll actually see they're saying the exact same things. We're always on our phone. We're always thinking about our next move versus everyone else. However, for those of you that do not consider yourselves a millennial, you're actually in the same category. We're all me people. So taking a look at the New York, um, this New York Times, or excuse me, New York cover, Newsweek cover, these came out in the 80s, 90s, same thing, same trend. We're always thinking about ourselves. Um, of course, if you have families, friends, you're thinking about them as well, but we're intrinsically me people. So with your digital advertising efforts, how exactly do you cater to these people that are just thinking about themselves? And that's where hyper-personalization in your digital strategy can really make an effect and really showcase um, why your brand matters. So taking a look at how often people are spending time um, on different mediums, if you have a 12-hour day, people are spending almost half their time on the digital space. And that's not just millennials. That's people of all ages. About five, um, five hours and 42 minutes a day on the digital space. Taking a look even deeper, what you'll see is that two hours is spent on desktop and laptop, so maybe when you're you know, on Facebook or taking a break from work, but even more time is actually spent on your mobile device. So as we've become more of a me generation, our mobile devices have become just naturally a part of ourselves as well. So having a hyper-personalized digital strategy is important both on desktop, but also especially on mobile because of how many of us even have our mobile device with us right now. So 96% of shoppers will leave a website without making a purchase. And about 50% of these shoppers were open to purchasing from a new retailer. So one thing that I would take away from today is that people are not brand loyalists anymore, they're actually need loyalists. So when we're thinking about what exactly do, uh, when people are thinking about making their next purchase in whatever moment that it might be, they're not necessarily going back to a brand that they've already purchased from. They're actually doing a lot of research and they're taking a look at a lot of different resources before making that ultimate purchase. Um, I had a conversation this morning about, is Google the one responsible for those ads that keep following me around? In some part, yes, um, but it's because of this first statistics of 96% of people will leave your website without making a purchase. As Regina alluded to, Q4, busy holiday season, people are looking at multiple resources, and so having a hyper-personalized strategy can effectively make you at the top of those choice sets. Personalization benefits you. So some of the biggest brands who, in their vertical, were experiencing a dip in sales actually took a personalized marketing approach. So Coca-Cola, the share a Coke with friends um, branding effort, you've probably seen it. Um, you could get your name on a Coca-Cola bottle, bottle. And many consumers said it was really cool to see their name alongside one of the biggest, name, uh, biggest um, brands in the world. And then EA Sports. Um, so the gif giferator or giferator, however you want to say it, um, you can write your own line. So EA Sports also took a hyper-personalized tactic where you could implement your own phraseology alongside your NFL team. And then for Burberry, Burberry Kisses, another very, very big name brand that also subscribed to a personalized tactic as a new way of strategizing to bring customers through the door. What was interesting is with all three of them, All three of them saw an increase either in sales or engagement. And these are huge brands. They're not, you know, mom and pop shops. They're not, you know, we all know these three brands. All three of them experienced some sort of positive interaction because of their personalized strategy. And this was in a time, as mentioned before, where all three of them in their verticals, or just generally the vertical itself, were experiencing a dip in sales. So 
if these brands can do it and are seeing personalization benefit their bottom line, it's definitely something you should start to think about with your digital strategy in 2017. And Google might be a little bit to blame. Google um, and search is the original personalization engine. So pretty novel idea when you could put in a query or whatever it might be into a, your desktop and out would populate these searches that are very hyper personalized to what you were looking for. And another way to think about personalization is relevancy. So with Google search results, people got used to the fact that I can put in whatever search I need and I'm gonna see results that actually matter to me. And this kind of, um, I think, led to a very hyper personalized digital um, marketing play on Google AdWords. So as we mentioned before, our mobile phones are becoming more and more embedded in who we are because we just have them all the time. I'm always running to a meeting and I only really need my nap laptop, but I also have my mobile device right on top of it, just in case. So 87% of smartphone users turn to, search for, turn to search first in a moment of need. So we have a narrative at Google called micro moments. It might be known as a variety of other things to you. Um, but essentially what it says is that every moment you could be doing a search based on a need, a want, just a question you have. And you essentially want your name brand, if that search matters to you, to be on top of that mobile device. 61% of smartphone users say they're more likely to buy from companies who customize mobile information to their location. So we saw earlier near me searches have increased, um, just general searches um, on mobile have surpassed desktop in a few verticals. And having very customized content on that mobile device really speaks to your audience. Because of all the abilities you have as a digital, digital marketer to be tactful and to be hyper-personalized, more and more people are looking for that when they're doing their searches, they're looking at things. So it's something to keep in mind as you think about your digital strategy as well. As we mentioned, personalization equals relevancy. So just taking a look at the Google SERP, what you'll see is we try to be as personalized as well. And that's why I think Google is definitely one of the, you know, it is the number one search engine being used around the world. Looking at Bank of America, I might just be looking for, you know, some information about opening a credit card. But what Google is providing me here is they're providing me a bunch of different options so I can go to a very specific page based on my search. I can also go find a location on the map of where the closest B of A's are, so I can instantly even just go into a teller and talk to them. And then on the mobile device, if I'm just doing a search there, what you'll see is Google has actually put in an ability to install the app straight onto your mobile device. So a very, very personal experience I'm having right now with just one keyword search that makes me say, okay, there's a lot of areas that I can interact with. For Bank of America, great work on their part and um, you know if they're doing their digital advertising right it really just shows that they can take up so much space on that Google page and then even on the mobile phone they're instantly trying to engage you more with that app download 73 percent of consumers say that regularly getting useful information from an advertiser is the most important attribute when selecting a brand so while we are focused in the moment and owning those micro moments for terms and um, you know, queries that matter to your business are important, it's also important to think of this as a long tail strategy. It's not just in that moment we need that hyper personalization, that's true, but as you can see here, almost 75% of people say that they would consider an advertiser more because of how relevant their brand is, um, or because of how relevant the content is that that brand is providing. So it's something to think about even in the long-term cycle with your efforts of like retargeting, for example, or whatever it might be, where um, you do want to make sure that you're in front of those customers and being as hyper-focused and personalized with them as possible. One of our most successful um, solutions that we offer at Google, um, that we work with Blue Fountain Media on as well, is Gmail ads. So email reaches almost, I'd say, like 96% of the population. Gmail on its own reaches 56% of people. So 56% of US citizens are using Gmail in some capacity. And email is definitely one of the most personalized forms that you can market in. Um, just based on you're getting your own personal contact, most likely no one else has your login information. And so um, having some really personal tactical advertising within this hub really can showcase um, and really can speak to your customer on a very personal level. So after all this, you know, taking a look here, you can even see millennials, but this could be really any group of people. Um, they are 
on their mobile phone could be checking their email at this concert. But essentially, we always have personalized devices with us, and we're always using them in various ways. So owning those micro moments and owning that space on mobile, being personalized with your marketing is extremely important as we go forward in our more and more competitive digital space. So key takeaways. Every generation is online, meet them there. It's not just a millennial thing, it's basically all of us. They see a bunch of different phones on the table. It's important to meet your customer no matter what age bracket that they might be in. Digital is the gateway to per personalized marketing. More than half our time is spent on digital in some form, so having a personalized strategy is extremely important and can really make you stand out in the crowd. Be relevant, be useful, be timely. So make sure your content is consistently fresh. Make sure you're considering, OK, what would this customer like to see as they're engaging with us on the digital space? And it can really set you apart from your competitors. And that is it. Yes? Just uh, on the timely factor, how, ti uh, how recent is the data? Like, sure. Could you repeat that? I'm sorry. Uh, the data that you shared, how recent is it, and where is it from? Great, yeah. So it's all Google data, <laughs> except for some of the uh, e-marketer uh, trends that we did put in there. And I would say it's as recent as this year, actually. So we tried to keep it as current as possible. Um, and that's one of the great things. We're partnered with Blue Fountain Media. They do have access to this data as well. And so um, very current and very timely. Anyone else? Thank you.